Minor spoilers ahead, though it doesn't really matter. Also, I wrote the script for this video originally as a feature article on GameLuster.com last year. You can check out our website in the description below. There are some awesome people doing some great work over there. When you watch the ship pull away, you feel a sense of longing. A longing to be carried. Not by the systems that spin the suns or the corporations that run the colonies, but by love towards an uncertain future. Those were some of the last words right before the screen faded to black after I made my decision to stay on the I instead of joining Lem and his daughter Mina aboard the ship. A ship that Lem and I had worked tirelessly on for many cycles that would take us to a possibly brighter future. I made this decision in part because I felt it was the right one for my character in this moment, as I felt their story wasn't complete. Though, in truth, it was also because I didn't want this game to end. Not yet. There were characters whose stories weren't finished, their problems unsolved. I can't leave yet, I thought, as I tearfully watched Lem and Mina vanish into the void. And so I returned, to survive another cycle. This was a recurring theme during my playthrough of Citizen Sleeper, a tabletop-inspired narrative RPG developed by Jump Over the Age and published by Fellow Traveler. Every time I was given the choice between going off with one of the beautifully written characters and finally escape this decrepit and seemingly dangerous space station, an objective given to you from the onset, or staying back, I chose the latter. This decision repeated itself until most of the characters I shared a bond with grew closer to left with hopes of better tomorrows. But I remained, until there was nothing left for me to do. I pressed the left bumper on my Xbox controller and brought my drives, which is the objectives, to be greeted with a blank page. I was done. The only thing left was simply to keep living, work with Moritz on yet another mundane contract, help Tala at the bar, and eat another bowl of mushroom stew with emphasis. When I exited out to the dashboard and turned my Xbox off, I couldn't help but feel hollow and full at the same time. A fullness in knowing that I had created a home for my character, given them a reason to live and to keep on living. In knowing that the characters whom I said goodbye to are, or will be, in a better place. And yet the hollowness of knowing that my character had to continue living in this shell of a body. A body that is not entirely theirs, but merely a synthetic property of an exploitative organization with blurred memories from a sleeping owner thousands of miles away. Why then, when I was given the choice to continue my character's existence within the vast networks of the eye, leaving my body and simply existing eternally and at peace as data, not having to worry about my next injection of stabilizer, did I choose, yet again, to return to my corporeal, corporeal form? The answer to that is one that I doubt I'll ever be able to give, but it's a choice that I would like to believe the developers that jump over the age think is the right one. The game tells you from the onset that the primary objective for your character is to get off this space station and escape. But the more you play, the more you connect with these characters, and the more you get acquainted with each section of this station to the point where you know it like the back of your hand, you come to realize that the objective is to be, to allow yourself and fight to exist. Even if that choice comes with suffering, there's a willingness I felt my character must have to endure that suffering. Not for some self-sabotaging reason, but in order to continue to feel. And the game purposefully, through thoughtful and genuine writing, illustrates these feelings beautifully within subtle and intimate interactions between characters. When the game told me that my character couldn't necessarily feel the tastes of Emphasis' famous stew, but it still gave them a sensation of warmth, a feeling of home, even if they didn't understand what that word meant, it told me all I needed to know about my future on this station. Moments like these can only work if the many aspects of game development can come together and stride in unison. And thankfully, they do. From the evocative and tremendous artwork of Gilliam Singelen that brings each of the characters to life, to the subtle contextual pieces of music that ebbs and flows between traditional sci-fi synth beats and ethereal soundscapes that illustrate the vastness of the void you are a part of, all of which perfectly accentuate but never overpower both the suspenseful and intimate moments. And of course, Garrett Damien Martin's heartfelt but never cliché 
first-person script, a choice that I feel was purposeful in attaching the player to the character, to live that experience not through the detached prose of third person, but in the heart of the first person. This decision, then, makes the dialogue choices for the player even more visceral, and the choices you make in Citizen Sleeper are not between life or death, they're between, for me at least, the illusions of escape for better tomorrows or allowing yourself to exist in the today. Discovering yourself and those around you with each passing cycle and being a part of a community, however insignificant it may seem. This is a narrative game unlike any other, whose themes aren't presented linearly, but ones that you must allow yourself to feel and accept as you play. It's a game that wants you to live, to allow both the hellos and goodbyes of characters, and to understand that to wake is to suffer, but to endure is to find the warmth that will eventually come. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, as you can see, Citizen Sleeper means a lot to me, so I encourage anybody watching this video, please go play this game, support these devs. Um, it's such a beautifully written, intimate, and meaningful game that I feel will resonate differently, differently with um, every single person who's playing it. And if you're one of the few that stuck around to this portion of the video, I mean, geez, thank you so much. Um, this is my first video on this channel, so I'm really excited to see how it turns out. Um, but if you want to see more of my work, I'm actually a writer, and I write visual short stories, predominantly sci-fi, in my Patreon at patreon.com slash shazm. You can find it in the description below. Um, my first short story, A Date on the Edge, is available now completely for free for everybody. Um, so give it a read, I'm really proud of it. And if you like it and want to see more, then consider supporting me. Um, all right, thank you so much. I hope to be doing a lot more of these. All right. See ya.